So it's Friday, January, not June, January 12th, 2018. And we're just going to do our weekly catch up where I'm going to answer some of the questions that you have been sending me. Just say hello, do the business stuff, and then we'll move on. So the first thing I want to say is I did load a video yesterday, but the fabulous YouTube never finished processing it. So it's still sitting there. I'm going to have to uh, delete it and reload it tomorrow. I don't normally load videos on the weekend because I believe that everybody should be doing something else on the weekends, but there will be sort of the second half of the homesteading video where we talk about woofing, which is really a great entryway uh, in an RV or van, or you don't even have to have one to see if that kind of life is for you in terms of living on the land, because you know how I feel about it. Uh, the second thing is I've gotten several emails lately that have asked about what my story is. And, and then, you know, with the idea that if I would just share more of my story, maybe uh, more people would watch and pay attention. And so, you know, what's really interesting, so I've thought a lot about this, as you know, I've talked about it before. What's really interesting about YouTube is YouTube is non-linear storytelling, right? Because in normal storytelling, in a movie or a book, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's a conclusion, there's a lesson. You have your introduction to your character, you have your conflict, why am I in a trailer, right? And how you resolve that conflict becomes the, the bulk of the movie or the story. Then you have resolution, either you have a happy ending or a sad ending, or if you're super artsy, some kind of weird abstract thing at the end. And, you know, honestly, when I left on this whole journey, that was my goal was to write a book. In fact, I wanted to write a book and then insert the little videos instead of pictures. The technology did not evolve to support that process. And somewhere along the way, it just got to be too much story. And then nobody reads books. So here we are in the video format in a non-linear storytelling model, because most of you are coming in at some point way after the beginning, which for me was 10 years ago. So it, there's no way I can consolidate 10 years of story into every video so you will feel caught up. And it's a lot of work to dig around into all my old videos because they are all over the place. They are not a linear storytelling process, even though that was sort of my intention at the beginning. Um, some people who are late to YouTube have been very strategic and they have created a linear story path and their goal is to bring you their story as part of your viewing experience. And as you've heard me share recently, I'm kind of getting off that model um, because thinking about it, if you really think about it, we had soap operas, we had reality TV, now we have YouTube vlogs. And, and this is all, uh oh, the wind's gonna do something funky here. Uh, the door just opened, I was trying to block the wind. I'll be right back. <laughs> to be continued. Okay, so what's interesting is I really think these vlogs is sort of living through other people's lives. It's just an extension of our desire to uh, passively observe the process of other people. And there's always some value in that. But what I really want to say as the therapist in me is that you have to be really careful about which story you're participating in. And one of the big problems that I see in this YouTube format is it can be super positive in terms of people sharing their personal story or very negative because the power of somebody's story is when there's a beginning and a middle and end and it moves you through that process. But the other really powerful piece is which story in yourself are you reinforcing? And there's a lot of victim storytelling on this uh, YouTube format and also in the RV van community. And um, I think I've participated in that a little bit uh, as I was trying to sort of feel my way around. I do not want to participate in that because I do not want to reinforce the idea that anybody's a victim. There's always just circumstances. Bad crap happens to everybody. It's who you become from that that is the real power in your life and in any story. And one of my favorite examples is, I don't have the book this time, it's another uh, Native American legend tale. It's, it's called Daughters of Copper Woman. And I love the visual behind this, but the women had a council. And you know when the women would talk as a group, you could tell your story three times. After the third time, if you came back telling your story, and you hadn't resolved anything or made a change, the entire group would get up 
and move away from you. And I think that's really powerful. I think that we are so focused on being victims in our culture these days. I think we reward people for being a victim. We give you money, we give you fame, we give you uh, a lot of adulation. For those of you who are old enough to remember, a lot of the original stories about Americans were the Horatio Alger version in the early 1900s where hard work and stick to were the markers of success. Not talking about what a victim you are and then having people give you money to support you in that process. So that's just my personal feeling. Uh, I think we all are attracted to different things. So I've made the conscious decision to not be part of this uh, genre that has emerged uh, from the false stories of soap operas to the real life stories of YouTube bloggers um, where my goal isn't to walk you through my personal tragedy so that you can feel like there's an outcome uh, because good story also needs drama. I don't choose to bring my personal drama to you and so that you will feel excited about coming back to the next episode. Um, so I think it's important to share the little mile markers or milestones, you know, like Lilith leaving because she's no longer going to be in any of the pictures. But I am not here to tell you what's going on with me so that you can feel connected to me in that way. My goal is to remind you about what's important to you and then hopefully get you thinking about how you want to create your life. That is my goal. So I am not going to tell you all of my personal stuff and I wish you luck, but I wouldn't want to drag around and try to look at all my old videos either. They're a nightmare. Um, and thirdly, uh, in this first documentary, I will be doing kind of a short recap of the process because it is going to be about a trailer or shelter. So there will be a tiny recap in the actual documentary process. So that, my friends, is the answer to why I don't do more personal storytelling. <laughs> The next issue I want to address is uh, the idea of original content versus uh, why I don't do more other kind of stuff. And uh, this is a very slow, steady process. Remember, I'm not making these videos because I think I'm going to be famous somehow, but because it's easy to do clickbait and it's easy to take other people's material, repackage it, and then get success on YouTube. Um, it's easy to take other people's format, try to repackage that and get success on YouTube. I am not here for that. Uh, it's harder to do this original content stuff, uh, even harder still to market it in a way that people can find you. Uh, but if there's anything my life has shown me, I never take the easy way. And I usually don't have massive amounts of success, but here we are. <laughs> Uh, since we're talking about uh, people and personal stuff and that kind of thing, so the next comment I've gotten or question email I've gotten is about uh, the drama that you often see in these formats. And, you know, I will put my therapist hat on that for sure, uh, that it's also, you know, it's like high school, <laughs> is that people uh, function where they're comfortable. And a lot of drama is uh, in the celebrity entertainment world is manipulated and that you create some conflict and some drama. You got good entertainment, which is the essence of this video process. So, so that's kind of it for right now. I've had a lot of trouble sort of getting myself going. I have no excuses for that. I still haven't made any real progress on the trailer. I'm stuck right now trying to figure out one where I can do it. Because remember, I don't have the electricity, the tools, the... Uh, space to put my stuff while I work on it. So I've kind of bogged down right now. Uh, one of my cars broke. Thank you to the rat. So I'm trying to figure out how to fix that because my mechanic disappeared. <laughs> so there's just real life stuff happening. Uh, and no, I'm not moving as fast as I would like, but life goes on. We actually have a beautiful day today. So I'm happy about that here to share with you. So I don't have a lot of other personal stuff to report. Um, I just appreciate you guys watching. And as always, we will just keep doing this one step at a time. So before we go, I hope you will rise with the sun in your eyes, love in your heart, feet firmly on the ground as together we walk on this survival road one step at a time. Live free and die wild, my friend. I will see you next time.